Hey friend, Brandon here. These are the new Samsung Galaxy Buds 3 Pro, and I've been using them for nearly three months now, as I had early access to them for quite some time. And I have a lot of thoughts. In this in-depth immersive review from the perspective of an audio engineer, you'll be able to deeply understand and experience the differences and improvements from the Galaxy Buds 2 Pro and the factors that will help you determine whether or not the Samsung Galaxy Buds 3 Pro is for or not for you. Also talk about the Galaxy Buds 3 here and there. Make sure you wear headphones or earbuds in both ears to get the best experience in this immersive review because this is Tech Today. When I first saw the Samsung Galaxy Buds 3 Pro, I couldn't help but think about the obvious. They look like copies of the AirPods Pro 2. In many ways, that's true to a shocking degree, but some differences are unique to the Galaxy Buds 3 Pro. Still, its appearance and similarities with the AirPods Pro 2 could overshadow its strengths and value. So that's why you're watching this video to find out what those strengths and its value is. The case leaves behind the ring box design for something similar to the AirPods Pro 2 case, but it has a transparent top flap with flat sides on the top and bottom, which allows you to set down the case in any orientation. There are two colorways, silver and white. The silver has a more matte finish, but the paint or finish comes across as cheap, especially compared to the soft touch matte finish on the Galaxy Buds 2 Pro. I'd be afraid that the paint would scratch off over time because of how it looks and feels, but I haven't experienced that yet, so hopefully that remains. So I'm hearing some reports that people are actually having some misaligned earbuds on the seal or the two parts of the earbud itself. This is actually something that I have noticed on the AirPods Pro 2 as well. Maybe that form factor is a little bit hard to get it to line up perfectly, but with that, you have a lip. And when that lip is there, that means it's more prone to being snagged on things, which it may scratch the paint. There is a, a post I, sound, I found on Twitter or X that does have a little bit of a snippet there. The IP57 water and dust resistant earbuds depart from the jelly bean design that they've used for prior models. They adopted a stem design that has become so common because of the popularity of the Apple AirPods. However, Samsung doesn't want it to be called a stem. They want to call it a blade. Yeah, I know. At least they put a white LED light strip on it that illuminates when you open or close a case, or are in pairing mode, or using the Find My feature, or you squeeze both earbuds simultaneously to illuminate them. Besides looking neat, there's not much function to them, and if that's the case, I wish that it was RGB and you could control in the app, because that would be super cool. <laughs> as for comfort and feel, the Samsung Galaxy Buds 3 is essentially the same as the AirPods Pro 2, as it shares the same bulb shape, and even the ear tip attachment style that was previously only found on the AirPods Pro 2. And that design avoids having the connection point jut into your ear canal, but puts the rigidity into the ear tip itself. So it's fit to size, and that's quite a coincidence, if not purposeful. Interestingly, with those ear tips, some people are having issues where they try to remove it from the earbud itself, and that little rigidity in the ear tip just breaks off. This is not something I've ever experienced on the AirPods Pro 2. So perhaps the material that's being used on the Galaxy Buds 3 Pro is thinner. In my experience, whenever I take out the earbud, it comes unflapped every single time. That may be an indication that the material is not as robust as the Apple AirPods Pro 2. Oh man, another update while I'm editing this video. So unfortunate thing, Samsung has paused the sale of the Samsung Galaxy Buds 3 Pro and pulled them from the shelves. Apparently there are some additional reports of some people having the ear tips rip and they want to address that and make sure that it's not something that's gonna be widespread. And if it is, that they alleviate any sort of issue with that so that you can get these in your hands as soon as possible and you can enjoy them. As you watch the rest of this review, it'll kind of make sense why it's good that this is being addressed right away so you can get them in your hands soon. Also, I can say that in the three months that I've been using these, I haven't personally had an issue with it and I've changed the ear tips multiple times. I have to actually in order to capture some of the samples from the earbuds to work with my microphone concoction and then switch it back so I can actually use them for myself personally. I haven't had an issue with it, but if other people are having issues with it, it definitely needs to be dealt with. And so I'm glad that's being worked on. Uh, so I commend Samsung for, for doing that. And uh, hopefully everyone can Easy soon. Whether or not it's a copy, this is good since so many people have told me that the previous Galaxy Buds Pro would not fit in their ears just because of the shape. The normal Buds 3 are like the normal AirPods as they do not go into the ear but sit outside of it. Like the Buds 3 Pro, the same sensors and sensor placement mimic what Apple is doing down to the proximity sensor that responds to flesh rather than light. For those who had an allergic reaction to the Buds 2 Pro, the previous generation, as far as I can tell, the materials that they are using here are not 
here anymore, and the charging points are located on the bottom of the blade, just like the AirPods Pro. I'd imagine you won't have the same allergic reactions, but let me know if you do in the comments. I can't help but think that Samsung is trying to avoid comments about these being a direct copy of the AirPods Pro 2, so the stem design does feel like a change for change sake. It has this unique polygonal angular shape, which is unfortunately rather uncomfortable when interacting with the squeeze gesture than a typical stem. You'll naturally reach for the pointed sides of the stem rather than the flatter ones, and when you are reaching for it, you're grasping for the area closest to your cheekbone, which means there's not much room, and for me, that means I'm touching my face. But there's more than pinch gestures, there are now swipe gestures, which I love. The placement differs from what you'd find on the AirPods Pro 2, since the swipe area is on the back instead of the front, so you'll have to use your thumb instead of your pointer finger to adjust the volume. And some people prefer this, some don't, I personally don't, but it's hard to not see this as another change for change sake. Despite the unpolished physical interactions due to the form factor, I'm glad there are both squeeze and swipe gestures so you can have your typical interactions and swipe volume controls on both earbuds. That's great news for solo earbud wearers like me. Most earbuds don't have that and it makes me bummed every time I review an earbud without it. The Samsung Galaxy Buds 3 Pro is one of the few earbuds with this combination of interactions, so that's a massive win for me. Do you know what else is a massive win? How LG and their incredible vacuum cleaners can help you live a dust-free life. After vacuuming with an LG vacuum, you only have to put it back in the dock. It automatically empties the dust into the dustbin where you can easily throw it out. No more inhaling or getting dust on your face. Yuck. There's even a five stage filter in the vacuum, so the air that it expels is nice and clean. Great for your asthma and your allergies. You can find out more about LG's vacuums by clicking the link in the description or the pinned comment. Thanks to LG for sponsoring this portion of the video. With the ANC on, the Samsung Galaxy Buds 3 Pro has six hours of listening time on one charge with an additional 26 hours with the case. And the Buds 3 has five hours of listening on one charge and 24 hours of additional battery life with the case. The Buds 3 Pro has one hour more listening time on a single charge than the Buds 2 Pro and eight hours more charge with the case. So this is a fantastic change. And that's kind of one of the benefits of having a stem. You can store more in the bud itself like a larger battery. You can charge the buds in the case with USB USB-C or wireless charging, but it does not have Qi 2 or MagSafe support, so you won't be able to use all those neat magnetic accessories. And for those wondering, you have to charge it from the back. You can't set it down from the bottom and wirelessly charge it. It supports Bluetooth 5.4 and LE audio, which means it has great solid connection even at longer distances and across my house, whether upstairs, downstairs, or far. Along with Bluetooth 5.4 is Orcast support, which allows connecting to available broadcast networks like airport gates, TVs at a bar, or restaurant, live events and Samsung TVs without needing to take out your earbuds. I'm very excited about Orcast. If you have a Samsung Galaxy device, you can utilize the same lower latency gaming mode as in the past, but it is not available on non-Galaxy devices. If you have high quality audio turned on, you won't be able to use this gaming mode. Essentially using wired earbuds or headphones is the best route for professional gaming. 360 audio support continues, which will help provide a more immersive experience while watching content like movies on your phone or Samsung TV, using it for viewing or AR, or recording binaural audio on a Samsung Galaxy device in the Pro Video mode. It supports SSC, lossless 24-bit, 96 kilohertz audio, which is a high-end codec for high-quality sound. Alternatively, and not to be confused with bitrate or sample rate, they do state that it supports a frequency output from 20 hertz up to 40 kilohertz, which is like marketing and it's just not practical. The human hear range goes up to 20 kilohertz, so 40 kilohertz is only helpful if you're a dolphin. So don't fall for the marketing nonsense. The Galaxy Buds 3 Pro also supports Find My Device, where the blades illuminate and beep loudly to help you find it. Oddly, I could only get this feature to work if the lid was open or the earbuds were outside of the case. That means that you cannot search for it if both the earbuds are in the case and the lid is closed. Unfortunately, it does not have ultra wide band support, so it doesn't support precise location data that is live and up to date that you can search for in augmented reality. It doesn't have that great experience that you get from the AirPods Pro 2 or Samsung SmartTag, which is unfortunate because that's a fantastic quality of life feature. At least you can have your phone notify you if you leave your buds behind. So I guess there's that. Still not as good. 
One area that Samsung emphasized and said they improved from the Galaxy Buds 2 Pro was the microphone. There are improvements with the mic being closer and pointed at your mouth because of that stem, and a new super clear call feature that provides a capture quality of your voice up to a frequency range of 16 kilohertz, which would match what it sounds like if you were talking to your actual phone using that mic instead of the earbuds. This should make it more transparent and high fidelity than your typical Bluetooth earbud, which is ironically worse sounding than the cliche telephone phone sound. So this could be a big deal. Unfortunately, capturing super clear calls is only possible with a Samsung Galaxy device. Either way, what they say and what reality is needs to be determined. So let's conduct some objective tests to see how they perform and let the results speak for themselves. This is what the Samsung Galaxy Buds 2 Pro would sound like if I were calling someone. Keep in mind that this does not have super clear call capability. This is what a super clear call sounds like on the Samsung Galaxy Buds 3 Pro. Do you notice a notable difference in call quality between the Buds 2 Pro and the Buds 3 Pro? This is what the Samsung Galaxy Buds 3 non-pro model sounds like. It also has super clear call capability. What do you think about the quality of the phone calls between all three earbuds? This is what a Zoom call would sound like if you're using the Samsung Galaxy Buds 2 Pro. This is what a Zoom call would sound like if you're using the Samsung Galaxy Buds 3 Pro. Keep in mind that this would not benefit from the super clear call feature. By the way, I do have custom EQs available for the Samsung Galaxy Buds 3 Pro and the Buds 3, and they're available for channel members. This is what the Samsung Galaxy Buds 2 Pro would sound like in a normal quiet room. This is what the Samsung Galaxy Buds 3 Pro would sound like if you are in a normal quiet room. A super chat feature is also available to send a tip if you want to help support content like this. This is what the Samsung Galaxy Buds 2 Pro would sound like in a simulated cafe environment. How do you think it sounds amongst all the ambient noise? This is what the Samsung Galaxy Buds 3 Pro would sound like in a simulated cafe environment. Do you hear my voice nice and clearly amongst all the cafe noise? Of course, there are affiliate links in the description or pinned comment, so using them supports me at no additional cost to you. This is what the Samsung Galaxy Buds 2 Pro would sound like any windy simulated environment with that fan pointed at the earbud. You hear a bunch of uh, noise on it. This is what the Samsung Galaxy Buds 3 Pro would sound like in a simulated windy environment. Right now I have a fan pointed directly at the earbud. Do you notice a lot of wind noise or not? Okay, and I also want to say thanks so much for watching this video and make sure you share it with other people. The Samsung Galaxy Buds 3 Pro has new adaptive noise control features that move between ANC and transparency modes depending on the context. If it detects a siren from an ambulance or you're having a discussion, it will automatically change to transparency mode and lower your listening volume. It does this better than a lot of other options out there for earbuds because it doesn't announce this adaptive change every time it changes over, which is really distracting. These features are great because you don't have to manually change between settings. This is especially helpful when you have your hands full, so I appreciate this being included. But some things to note, the ANC strength is reduced in adaptive mode compared to having it off and manually choosing your awareness mode. The regular Galaxy Buds 3 also has ANC, but it's mild since it's an outer ear design, so there's not a direct seal to go into your ear canal. And because of that, it will only mildly reduce external noises. If there was one area that was lacking a lot from the Buds 2 Pro, it was the ANC and transparency performance. It was subpar and even below average, making it challenging to suggest as it wasn't well-rounded compared to many other options out there. So did the Buds 3 Pro change that? Let's have the objective tests speak for themselves, and I'll share more of my thoughts after. The normal Buds 3 is omitted because of its design and my inability to capture quality objective tests due to that design. This is what the Samsung Galaxy Buds 2 Pro would sound like in a quiet room with transparency mode on. How does it sound? This is what the Samsung Galaxy Buds 3 Pro sound like in a quiet room while in transparency mode. And yes, those are pieces of meat on the sensors to make it work. This is what the Samsung Galaxy Buds 2 Pro would sound like in a quiet room with A and C on. How is it performing? This is what the Samsung Galaxy Buds 3 Pro would sound like in A and C mode in a quiet room. How do you think it sounds? This is what the Samsung Galaxy Buds 2 Pro would sound like in a simulated...
cafe environment with transparency mode on. This is what the transparency mode sounds like in a simulated cafe environment. How do you think it sounds? This is what the Samsung Galaxy Buds 2 Pro would sound like with ANC on in a simulated cafe environment. This is what the ANC sounds like in a simulated cafe environment. How do you think it sounds? This is what the Samsung Galaxy Buds 2 Pro would sound like in ambient mode with a simulated windy environment with the fan turned on. How well is it rejecting the wind noise? This is what the transparency mode sounds like in a simulated windy environment with the fan pointed directly at the earbuds. How do you think it sounds? How do you think it sounds? Sounds like it's actually like confusing. Did you hear it move up there when it stopped hearing all the wind noise? Interesting. This is what the Samsung Galaxy Buds 2 Pro would sound like with ANC turned on and a simulated windy environment with the fan pointed at it. This is what the ANC sounds like in a simulated windy environment. How do you think it's handling it? How do you think it's handling it? So what did you notice? Personally, I'm thrilled with the improvements Samsung has made regarding ANC and transparency. It can finally keep up with the Apple AirPods Pro 2, but we'll verify that in my comprehensive comparison video coming later. At times, the ANC performed better than the AirPods Pro 2 while on a recent flight, but in most cases, it was about on par. The area that the AirPods Pro 2 typically pulled ahead for ANC was the higher end of the frequency range for the noise that you'd hear on a plane. The Galaxy Buds 3 Pro also has a touch of noticeable cabin pressure on the ear while ANC is turned on, and that puts it behind its competitors. The transparency mode has dramatically improved over the prior generation, with a far more natural sound than the Galaxy Buds 2 Pro's more low fidelity sound. The Buds 3 Pro feels more high fidelity and natural. There is a bump in the upper mid-range, a giveaway that it's still an artificial replication through the earbuds. While it's not as great as what you'd find on the AirPods Pro 2 or Bose QuietComfort Ultras, it's still much better than the average. I commend Samsung for really making some strides with its ANC and transparency. It has removed a point I was always stuck on when people asked me if they should get the Galaxy Buds Pro models. Some people know this, but Samsung owns Harman, which is known for their many audio brands like JBL, AKG, and more. They're also known for their work and research on the Harman Curve, a reference target for tuning the sound to the average person's taste and what they would likely enjoy. While this research is more complicated for earbuds over headphones, this history, expertise, and influence logically leads one to believe that the Samsung Galaxy Buds 3 Pro are excellent sounding and sound like what an audiophile would want, right? Well. Not quite. The Samsung Galaxy Buds 3 Pro's default sound isn't bad by any means. It's solid, but more subdued in the high end. This leads to a more muffled, darker sound that needs more clarity and energy on the high end. This is a departure from the sound of the original Galaxy Buds Pro, which I like the most in terms of the default sound within the Samsung Galaxy Buds Pro lineup, and I still do. But this gets more nuanced. The low end on it feels punchy and manages to avoid that bloated sound that so many earbuds are prone to having. That may be due to the dual driver setup in the Buds 3 Pro, one for the low end and one for the mids and highs. This makes it possible to have greater clarity and separation between frequency ranges rather than having a single driver trying to carry the entire load. The regular Galaxy Buds 3 only has one driver, is less full sounding, and has more significant mid-range issues due to its outer ear design. Let's listen to a sound sample that shows you the difference between the Buds 2 Pro and the Buds 3 Pro on its default EQ. It's important to emphasize that drivers and bit rates are only a part of what makes up what you hear. Think of it as the tools to create something. It gives Samsung the capability to do something, but the capability alone doesn't make it good. The actual sound comes down to multiple other factors like fit, but most importantly, the DSP or digital signal processing, or more easily understood as the tuning. You can experience the DSP's effects by utilizing the adaptive EQ by toggling it on and off and seeing how it adjusts the tuning based upon your 
ear canal shape and size. Some preset EQ options are available in the Galaxy Wear app for generalized tuning options for those unfamiliar with EQing, but it gets even better. The Samsung Galaxy Buds 3 Pro and Buds 3 are the first earbuds in their lineup that Samsung has provided a 9-band EQ option within the Galaxy Wear app that allows you to adjust the sound to your desired taste. This is huge and allows you to have an EQ applied globally regardless of the app or streaming service that you're using. Previously, you had to use Wavelet to get a custom EQ and that was only available on Android. Now all you need is a Galaxy Wear app and an Android phone and your EQ settings are stored on the device which means you can adjust the EQ on an Android device with the Galaxy Wear app and it'll carry that tuning over to your laptop or even an iPhone which is fantastic. Now I was able to notice that the sound quality between the Samsung Galaxy Fold 6 that I have and the Apple iPhone that I had was quite a bit different and that's probably because of the high resolution tuning or codec that you have available on your Samsung device which is kind of neat to see because the iPhone uses a lower quality codec called AAC. So codecs do make a difference but still not as much as the tuning. While the 9-band EQ is still less robust than the Nothing Ear 2024's advanced EQ, this is still better than what we've had in the past, and it makes a massive difference to me. With my custom EQ, I can get a sound that lightly adjusts the low end to make it punchier and adds energy and clarity to the high end. This is a massive difference compared to the default EQ. Here's a sample to hear the difference. Now, if you want access to my custom EQ for the Samsung Galaxy Buds 3 Pro and Buds 3 and many other earbuds and headphones, they're available for channel members. All you have to do is click the join button and choose a tier. This helps support the making of more content like this. Thank you. So is the Samsung Galaxy Buds 3 Pro for you? Well, unfortunately, if you want the best audiophile quality sound out of the box, the Galaxy Buds 3 Pro may not be for you. If you don't mind tinkering, have an Android phone, have access to my custom EQ, and want a more audiophile sound, the Galaxy Buds 3 Pro or normal Buds 3 may be for you. Unfortunately, the Galaxy Buds 3 Pro is not for you if you need an earbud with a robust, up-to-date Find My capability. If you're in the Samsung ecosystem, the Samsung Galaxy Buds 3 Pro will benefit you, so it might be an excellent fit, especially for super clear calls. If you previously had comfort and fit issues with prior generations of the Galaxy Buds, you should check out the Buds 3 Pro as it might be a good fit for you. If you're sensitive to ANC ear pressure or the cabin pressure, you might find the Galaxy Buds 3 Pro a bit uncomfortable at times. It's not super severe, but it's still a little bit there. If you want the best sounding microphones that I've ever heard on an Android phone with earbuds, Bluetooth earbuds, and you have a Samsung Galaxy device, you should definitely get the Samsung Galaxy Buds 3 or 3 Pro. This is just crazy. If you're on Android and you've been looking for a well-rounded earbud with great ANC and transparency, the Galaxy Buds 3 Pro is a great choice. If you're looking for an option that does not go inside your ear canal but sits outside, the normal Buds 3 are a solid option, especially with my custom EQ. The Samsung Galaxy Buds 3 Pro costs $249.99 and the normal Buds 3 costs $179.99 at list price. If the Galaxy Buds 3 Pro or the Buds 3 are for you. Affiliate links are located in the description and they help support my channel if you click on them before you purchase them. Over the past couple of years, the earbud space has become far more competitive than ever. And whether the Galaxy Buds 3 Pro is for me has become more complex than ever, which is honestly a good thing. That means many great options are out there now and the Galaxy Buds 3 Pro is among that group. So is it for me? Well, I would say the Galaxy Buds 3 Pro is for me, but it has some caveats. While the Samsung Galaxy Buds 3 Pro is a vast improvement and they have a solid sound, they're different from what I want out of the box. They still need that robust Find My feature like the AirPods Pro 2 and the sound could be more energized and more clear on the top end. While I prefer other earbuds for sound out of the box, like the Nothing Ear 2024 or the Technics AZ80, they often need improvements in other areas like ANC and transparency mode, software, battery life, or ease and reliability of pairing and connectivity. With my custom EQ, I can get the sound I want for daily use across all my devices. I would be more than happy to suggest the Samsung Galaxy Buds 3 Pro as long as you have my custom EQ. The ANC and transparency modes are amongst the best out there and the swipe gestures are 
on the earbuds, which is a must for me. While I had hoped the Galaxy Buds 3 Pro was a product that I could easily say is the AirPods Pro 2 for Android, it isn't quite there. It is well-rounded overall with quality of life features that no other earbud has, but it's not quite there. It's close. At least I can make it sound better than the AirPods Pro 2. So the Galaxy Buds 3 Pro is for me. This video is made possible by an early unit provided by Samsung for my work with them in an early feedback group, which was paid for. This review that you're watching now was made with a retail unit provided by Samsung. I was not required to make a video for Samsung. This video was not sponsored by Samsung and they do not have editorial control over this review. Samsung is only able to see it for the first time alongside you. Thanks for watching This is Tech Today. Until next time.